Welcome to the BFS eNews Podcast. I'm Andy Cohen, your host. February is Black History Month, so please save these dates, February 9th and 10th, and plan to attend the PAT's annual Black History Celebration. On Thursday, February 9th, there will be a screening of the award-winning documentary film, Sembien. Through a vivid and captivating lens, this 90-minute 2015 film chronicles the life of self-taught Senegalese filmmaker, poet, and novelist Oseme Sembien, known to the world as the father of African cinema. Admission is free. A reception begins at 6, with the screening at 6.30 p.m., followed by a panel moderated by parent Noah Eisenberg. On Friday, February 10th, there will be a traditional school-wide celebration in the evening with a family dinner, group presentations in the school meeting house, and music and dancing for all. So today in studio, we're here with Kay Wilson-Stallings, the co-chair of the Black History Celebration. And uh, Kay is a parent, and also she is the Senior Vice President of Content and Development for the Sesame Street Workshop. Is that correct? Yes. Yeah. That's yeah. that's pretty well correct. <laughs> okay. But we're not talking about that, no. but we are talking about Black History Month mm-hmm. and the celebration that your committee is has been planning and we're about to see happen. Can you give us a few details about what we can expect? Highlighting ancient African histories, cultures, and global achievements prior to colonization. So in the past, uh, we've been more within the 20th and 21st century. And, um, and we thought it would be really um, great this year to really look at Africa prior to the slave trade. <laughs> and um, so we have programs that are talking about math and um, cultural experiences and you know science and, and a lot of different things that came from you know Africa and from African people. So what else is going to be taking place? Okay, so the the bulk of the day on on the Friday are workshops. And we have workshops on a variety of different topics. And and we also break up the workshops so that they're age appropriate. So we have an African drumming workshop that there's one session for preschoolers and kindergartners. And then there's another session for lower school and middle school. We have African cooking where the children are going to be making African chocolate pepper cookies mm-hmm. and um, and that will be for preschool and kindergartners and in the hieroglyphics workshop kids are going to learn about hieroglyphics and they're going to learn how to write their name or you know affirmations in hieroglyphics someone's going to come in and they're going to show masks from around the continent and then kids are going to get to make their own mask inspired by uh, something that they've just seen we're going to have an African tile making workshop where we have artists coming from, you know, outside of the VFS community, partnering with um, artist teachers here at the school where kids are going to make African tiles. And the goal is that this would be an ongoing uh, project and that those tiles will be um, put um, on the roof. So it will be an, a, an exhibit that would be, you know, a permanent exhibit. Oh, that's cool. We have African dance workshop, which is for the entire community. So parents can join their kids in an African dance workshop. Uh, Capoeiro is also for the entire community, so parents, again, can be part of that um, workshop along with their kids. Uh, We have a Timbuktu model building. Kids are gonna have an area of the Timbuktu area, including the library, the, you know, university, all the different areas that made up Timbuktu and its academic center. And they're going to make little out of clay, little houses and structures. And then we're going to have a plexiglass case put on top of it. So this could be a permanent piece of work that could be someplace on display at the school. And then there's the community dinner and that takes place in the cafeteria. And um, and Tom and his team always do a really great job um, with the menu. This year we're going to have of foods from all different parts of Africa. And um, and then it all culminates with a program in the Meeting House where we have performances from students. We have um, moments where lower school and middle school uh, kids, as young as kindergarten, explain something about the topic. We call them did you know moments. So they'll get up on stage and they'll give a fact that um, people might not be aware of. We have a musician coming? Yeah, so as part of the um, Meeting House performance at the end of the evening, uh, we'll be featuring jazz percussionist Lafrey Ski, 
and she is a educator, she's a musician, she's a composer, and one of the things that she does that we're really excited about is she does this interactive workshop where she helps to demonstrate to people that different rhythms and beats and, and musical influences came from Africa. So she'll, through this interactive workshop, show us how music that people are familiar with, like hip hop and jazz and blues, a lot of the origins of that music came from Africa. And then she'll close the night with her uh, band Black Sonic performing. Cool. All so right. Exciting. And then there's a film you're also Yes. Yeah, so then on Thursday night, the 9th, um, we're going to be showing the documentary Sembien. And, um, and he is a filmmaker, self-taught. He's been referred to as the father of African cinema. Mm -hmm. Okay, well, thank you so much for being here. Oh, I have to ask you one question though. Every time a parent comes on, uh -huh. I ask this, and you're, I think, the fourth parent so far to appear. Why do you send your child to Brooklyn Friends School? Hmm. Uh, the community. You know, it's, he's been here since he was three. And, um, and, and we're really just, he's so a part of the community. We're so a part of the community, the, the friends that he's made, the warmth, the just, you know, the, the support. Okay. Yeah. Well, thank you so much. Thank you. Okay. Now I'm here with Noah Eisenberg, who, uh, is going to be, um, working. You're on the committee for the, uh, black history celebration and will be, and what will be your part in this? Um, yeah, I've been a committee member now for three years running, and the past two years what we've done is we uh, organize a film screening in conjunction with the given theme of that year. This year's theme is pre-colonial Africa, and we're going to be doing a film screening on Thursday the 9th of February, uh, starting at 6.30 p.m., and it's, uh, it's, a, it's a wonderful documentary on the so-called father of African cinema, Usman Zemben. I'm so glad you said that because I introduced the show and did not quite get the name quite right. But uh, tell us a little bit about the film. Well, it, 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 it chronicles his life and his very, very modest uh, beginnings. Uh, he was um, uneducated. He, he had to go work when he was already, already as a teen, uh, working on the docks as a laborer. And he is an autodidact. He's self-taught. And so uh, he began to, to immerse himself in mainly the great works of, of French literature. Uh, Senegal was, as many people know or may no longer know, was a French colony. And so Zemben, already as working as a writer and a critic and a novelist, was still very steeped in that tradition. Um, many of his movies also chronicle the the travails of of uh, the Senegalese and Africans more generally in a post-colonial uh, time frame. We follow his his whole life and his and his career. It was co-directed. Um, I, I wish I could give you their exact names, but the the one person is is is, is Zemben's biographer. He's a professor of French at Mount Holyoke College up in South Hadley, Massachusetts, and he collaborated with a, another director, a more experienced filmmaker. And what they've made is a is a really really loving uh, portrait of this 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 great Senegalese filmmaker. Um, the documentary lasts just under ninety minutes, and following the screening. We'll have a a fabulous uh, panel. One one of the reasons we're screening this film is my New School. I run, I run the the film program, the Screen Studies program um, at the Liberal Arts College at the New School at Eugene Lang College uh, of Liberal Arts. And one of my colleagues in, in in another division at the New School, Michelle Mater, is a programmer, and she programs specifically a, a a series on filmmakers of color. And she is the one who told us about this. She will be on the panel, as will Ashley Clark, who's a wonderful uh, critic and programmer. He did the BFI Black Star series this past semester in, in London. He's, he's uh, originally a Londoner, but he's been based here for a number of years. And then we'll also have Che Chisholm, who's a former parent, former BFS parent, who runs Automatic Studios in Dumbo. And she is a filmmaker herself. And so that will be the, the three-person panel. We'll have a discussion of the film after the screening, and then uh, we will open up the floor for, for questions. Uh, we had a very, very lively conversation last year when we screened the Shirley Chisholm uh, documentary, 
Chisholm 72, Unbought and Unbossed. And uh, I anticipate a similarly lively conversation after this one. Terrific. That sounds, that really sounds awesome. A great explanation of what's going to happen. But uh, before we end, I have to ask you a question. Okay, of course. I ask all parents who no appear problem. on this show. Why do you send your kids to Brooklyn Friends School? We returned from a year in Berlin in the fall of 2009, and our older son, Jules, who's now been at BFS for eight consecutive years, it was time for him to go to preschool. And my wife had the good, <laughs> the good foresight to know that maybe we should try, rather than just going to one of the local preschools, we, we live in the south end of Park Slope, why don't we try a school like Brooklyn Friends? Uh, it's got an extraordinary reputation. We were both very, very fond of the Quaker approach to education. And so we applied and were fortunate enough that, that he was admitted. Four or five years later, his little brother then, who'd been to three years of German language preschool in Park Slope, they didn't have this. German's my other, is my other language. And, but because we were so still so very, very impressed with, with friends, we made a choice to have Bruno follow his brother's footsteps and, and attend the school. And we were happy, you know, very happy and fortunate enough to know that that there was a place for him. But yeah, that's it. I think it's the, it's the Quaker approach to education and then just everything that we've experienced over the past eight years. We've been very, very happy with the school. Wunderbar. <laughs> Danke schön. On today's show, we have featured images from last year's Black History Celebration and from last week's Lower School Math and Science Day. So everybody, I hope you come out for our big events this week and remember to let your life speak. 